Welcome back to the course entitled Elementary Electrochemistry. We have now reached the last lecture of this course and I hope you have seen the demonstrations of electrochemistry experiments, the conductometric uh, titrations and the Oswald dilution law experiments. And uh, in today's lecture, I will uh, discuss the calculation part and how to draw graph plot for those experiments and uh, then I will show you how you can uh, calculate the end point of those uh, experiments. So, before going into the presentation, I want to show you the data. So, what you can see here is that uh, I am demonstrating it with the data of strong acid versus uh, strong base titration that is HCl versus NaOH. So, in that experiment, we generated the data with different volumes of NaOH and the corresponding conductance in millisiemens that was recorded. So, if you remember the data, we took it at every interval of 0 0.04 uh, ml of uh, NaOH being added and then we equilibrated the solution to reach the uh, uh, stable conductance value and read the conductance values. And we had done this experiment up to <coughs> 2 ml and hope you remember that the NOH was about 10 times more concentrated than uh, the unknown HCl. So, when we look at this data, we see that at 1 ml also it is continuously reducing, right? And then 3.386, 3.54 and then it starts to increase and then it slowly increases beyond that. So, it is somewhere here at around 1 point between 1.2 and 1.24 ml, we should have our end point. So, when these uh, values that is volume of NOH was plotted against the uh, conductance, you can see a V type plot that I have shown here. Right? So, these data points are generated from the experiment. So, now what we have done is that we have plotted this and joined with straight lines. So, it looks like joined with line that is looks like a V. And then what I have done which uh, one can do using graph paper in a different way. I will tell you about that. What I have done is I have splitted this graph into two parts. One part is this downward uh, line that is the negative slope line and the positive slope line. And then I have used Excel to calculate the equation to fit those points. That is the equation for a straight line where y equal to mx plus c is here where this C is the conductance value at the zero volume of NOH, that fixed C. And the fit is reasonably well, 0.99 is the R square value. So, that indicates the fit is very good. So, with that, this is my uh, equation Y equal to MX plus C for the points before the equivalence point. I have taken the line on after the equivalence point which is showing a steady increase in uh, the conductance and in the same way I have uh, drawn a best fit straight line uh, using this uh, data points and again it is 9.998 which is again a good fit. So, one can easily calculate the end point by using these two equations the previous one here and this one there and try to find at which point these two straight lines meet using simple mathematical method. So, that point where these two lines would meet, one can assume that is the end point. So, that is the value of x and y for the end point and here the x will then give you the uh, value for volume of NOH. So, using that one can easily calculate the concentration of unknown HCl solution. Remember that we had already standardized the NOH solution using 
oxalic acid as primary standard, so we already know the strength of uh, that anoid solution. The other method using graph paper is uh, for you to draw a straight line, draw a straight line from this to that using a scale and then and also draw another straight line using those wherever those two straight lines meet that will be your uh, equivalence point so like this one can uh, get the uh, equivalence point using a graph paper and drawing an approximately correct straight line on the graph paper both the methods are uh, acceptable so using this method you can uh, easily get the endpoint. So this method can be used for both uh, for all the conductor metric titrations that you have uh, seen, and uh, I would encourage you to use the data which uh, I will be sharing in the group with uh, all of you uh, with the uh, lecture slides. So there you will get the entire data and then you can try to plot and uh, see yourself how the weak acid versus strong base titration changes and how the precipitation titration, triple mixture titration plots come out and easily you will be able to understand this uh, experiment yourself. I'm just demonstrating with one of those uh, experiments, other three data uh, sets. I will share with you in the forum, right? The other experiment that I had done, I had done is the experiment of Oswald dilution law, verification of Oswald dilution law using various concentrated solutions of acetic acid. So what I have done here is, this is the concentration in normality. And these are the conductance values that we measured during the experiment. So this is our experimental data. And we, if you remember, we determined the cell constant to be about 0.985, if I am not very much wrong. Uh, so this cell constant is used to calculate the specific conductance from the value of conductance using the formula <coughs> conductance into cell constant is specific conductance. So immediately you know that this value is my conduct, uh, specific conductance value and then you pull it, you will get the corresponding specific conductance value. Uh, the double state, I should not have done that. I had already done a calculation. Now we need to calculate the equivalent conductance lambda, which you know that equivalent conductance is 1000 into specific conductance by concentration. So using that method, one can easily calculate the value of equivalent conductance for all of those solutions. And then what I have done is I have plotted the square root of concentration. You see, I am written writing square root of concentration versus the equivalent conductance. So when I am plotting square root of conductance versus equivalent conductance, I am getting a plot like this. So what we see here is like a plot which keeps on increasing towards the lower value of concentration. And you see what happens in this concentration range is that the conductance of the solution decreases very, very rapidly. As a result, the resistance increases and the instrument does not record those values very accurately. So we cannot determine the value of equivalent conductance at infinite dilution for this solution. So one should extrapolate this to one should extrapolate this to the zero 
to get it get the value of uh, equivalent conductance at infinite dilution or one should use the method of Kohler's says law that is we have already discussed in the class that if you want to determine the lambda zero for acetic acid then you have to use the method where you have L0 of acetate plus L0 L0 for H plus. So now one can write this as L0 for CH3COO minus plus L0 for NH4 plus plus L0 for H plus plus L0 L0 for Cl minus minus L0 for NH4 plus plus L0 for Cl minus which essentially means you need lambda 0 for ammonium acetate plus lambda 0 for HCl minus the lambda 0 for NH4Cl. So if one can determine the equivalent conductance at infinite dilution for these three strong electrolytes, then one can determine the lambda zero for this uh, weak electrolyte. So for any weak electrolyte, one has to determine its uh, lambda zero value in this way, correct? So with this, I will conclude this uh, course by saying that hope you understood uh, some basic aspects of electrochemistry, conductance and its applications and we will have our final exam very soon and in that exam we will have a descriptive type of questions. Descriptive type means you will have to probably solve some mathematical problems yourself. You may have to derive some equations that we have discussed during the course and there may be some questions where you will have to draw some graphs or the plots and explain the nature of the plot, uh, why it comes like that and such and such. So I hope you will all uh, do well in your final exam. With this, I conclude this course. Thank you.